you know, philosophically as a biologist, I believe life on this planet has an intrinsic value of its own. They have a right to be here just like we do. And um, so if we can do whatever we can do to prevent impacts from destroying the populations of these animals, uh, it's the right thing to do. There's no question in my mind. I would not even stoop to argue with that, with, with somebody about that. Hi everyone, welcome to this special Evenings at the Conservancy. Uh, Evenings at the Conservancy is generously sponsored by V at Bentley Village and Collins Vision, and we're very grateful for their support. Tonight's special program is brought to you by LFE Capital, and we're very, very grateful for their support of this very important and wonderfully exciting topic. Tonight's presentation uh, features someone who is really a remarkable individual. You know, a lot of times in our community, there are names that we see over and over uh, in the paper, in the news, but there are other people that I really consider hometown heroes that really fly below the radar, but are doing some of the most important work, not just for our local community, but sometimes of significance nationally and even globally. And one of those people uh, who is a member of the Conservancy team is Dave Addison. Dave Addison has been involved in the sea turtle conservation efforts for over three decades here at the Conservancy. But really, when you think of Dave Addison, he really represents the story of the Conservancy. Uh, in the decade before he started the sea turtle research and monitoring program, Dave was also involved in our education programs as a biologist and helping to guide policy for the Conservancy. As the Conservancy grew, Dave became an even more important part of our organization. He really represents the heart and soul of what conservation in Southwest Florida and at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida is all about. We are so pleased tonight to present Dave Addison, a fantastic biologist, his passion about sea turtles and those that have worked with him and have been impacted by him over those three decades. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Dave Addison. I have ran the sea turtle monitoring project on Key Wade Island for the Conservancy and the turtles, by the way, for uh, 30 years and uh, still somewhat involved with it, but uh, it's not something you just walk away from. It's been a marvelous, marvelous experience. Dave is Mr. Sea Turtle. Anybody in the sea turtle business knows Dave Addison. He has brought the conservancy to a uh, level of national attention. He is one of, has, he runs one of the longest running sea turtle programs in the nation. And he does it with a low key attitude that just draws you in. Anytime you get out there with Dave and listen to him talk about sea turtles, you get jazzed about it, you really do. He has mentored dozens and dozens of interns a lot of which have gone on to make their mark in the sea turtle world and that is amazing and they still keep in touch with them and that just shows you how much of an impact he had on their lives. I was an intern for Dave back in the summer of 2014 um, and that experience was amazing in many different ways but it was sort of the stepping stone that allowed me to uh, continue on um, working in the sea turtle conservation field um, and go on from there to continue that work at other places. Over the course of 30 years, Dave says he began to realize one of the best parts of the job was to mentor these young interns and to give them a glimpse into a world they've never seen before. I didn't realize it when I started this back in 1990. And I just, you know, I'm okay, the job is to keep the raccoons from eating all the turtle eggs. So hire these people to show them how to do it and we'll, we'll do that. So as the, as the years slipped by, uh, I found it increasingly interesting and enjoyable to meet all these young people. Uh, it's a chance to, to show them something and uh, watch them react to it and find out how they, uh, how they, uh, how they respond. I, mean, I was an intern with Dave the summer of 1997. It was about a year after I graduated from college. And I'd had a course in college about sea turtle biology. So when I had the opportunity to actually do hands-on research and field work with Dave, it was an amazing opportunity. Um, it really prepared me for a career doing field work. 
Staff members who work with Dave also say that his knowledge, experience, and infectious passion for the sea turtle program have helped them to be better prepared to manage projects of their own in the future. So now I've spent about five years working at the Conservancy and a number of those I've spent out on the island. Um, I've gotten to spend a lot of time with Dave and learn a lot of different things from him, um, both about sea turtles and just about running a project um, just as big as, as this is. One of the main things I think Dave has really impressed upon me is just its patience. Um, it's, it's knowing that you know, we'll get there eventually. Just the way he has always approached things in a very measured way. He's never <laughs> really worked up about it. We're just, um, you know, one step at a time kind of thing. And so I've, I've really um, tried to take that into my own approach while I'm out there on my own now. Um, and I think that really goes a long way. The other thing I learned about it was as we continued along, if there were chances to help people out or provide uh, access or a window to these animals for researchers, uh, you just say yes. And that's how you, that's how you develop a rapport with, with your colleagues. After my internship with Dave, I've been able to kind of maintain my working relationship with the Conservancy. I've been partnering with them for the past 20 years conducting an incubation temperature study with them out on the island. They've been deploying temperature data loggers for me in the sea turtle nests. And we're using that data to kind of predict whether the hatchings out on Kuwaitan that are being produced are male or female. Um, the study's become really interesting. We've had great results from it. The east coast of Florida is mainly producing female hatchlings, and we're finding out that out on Kuwaitan Island, a lot of the hatchlings are either a good mix or mostly males, which is really interesting to me. Um, it's showing that how important Kiwaden is to the population of turtles and how we're actually producing a lot of males into the system. I've hired well over a hundred people over the years on this project and uh, most of them have a, uh, have a inherent interest in sea turtles. Uh, some of them may not have been captivated by them when they started, but by the time it's over, these turtles have done their magic and they want to uh, they want to spend more time with them. And this is kind of what these, these uh, internships are all about for these, for these young people. They get experience with this. They get used to working on, on, a, on a beach alone at night and having oversight of something and making sure everything works the way it's supposed to work. I guess one of the important lessons was that when you're out doing field work on a barrier island, Murphy's Law prevails and whatever can go wrong will go wrong and just be prepared for it and be very flexible. Working equipment is one of the most important aspects of the sea turtle monitoring program. Key Waden is an island that stretches seven miles long. So without functioning boats and working ATVs, this project simply cannot move forward. Addison explained this was strikingly apparent even after his first night on the island. That, that first night, night out here, I probably didn't know a heck of a lot more about how to make this work than the people that I hired to do it. I had a, a good group of kids that were working for me. And uh, the thing that I didn't realize was if this project is to work, the equipment has to function. My saying that I've told people is they ask me what the most important thing about the sea turtle project is. And everybody guesses, oh, the eggs, the caging, all this other stuff that you do on the project. Uh-uh. The answer is the equipment is the most important thing on that project. Your boat doesn't start. Your ATVs break down. That's why your equipment is so important. If you don't have that equipment working, you're not going to get the project done. One of the things you learn very quickly is that things, um, machinery, equipment, everything's constantly breaking. ATVs are um, really one of the bigger issues. The carburetors were forever getting fouled up, so I spent some nights sitting out at two o'clock in the morning with a flashlight with the parts of a carburetor in my lap, cleaning it and then putting it back together again so we could keep going. And so the importance of maintaining equipment soon became a real 
cornerstone of, of how this works. And while equipment breaking down can certainly cause issues when you're working on an island at night, anyone who has worked the sea turtle program on Kiwaden will tell you there is another challenge that will test your resolve as a field biologist. Whenever you go out to the island at night, you've got to be prepared because it's not this idyllic island where you go running around on an ATV and have a great time all night. What it is, is you get out there and you step off the boat and you're immediately attacked by hordes of mosquitoes. No CMs, black flies, you name it, they're out there and they get you. And I, I will admit there's some nights, man, you, it's not very comfortable, believe me. It's not so much the mosquitoes, it's the no CMs on these still humid nights that just uh, really can make life unpleasant. But the first night out there, um, I, would, I knew there would be bugs. I mean, I had done mosquito research on black, black salt marsh mosquitoes a few years prior to that, so I knew what a lot of mosquitoes were, and so I was used to it, in a manner of speaking, as used to them as you get. And so my definition of what a lot of mosquitoes is is kind of perverse to some people. You know, it's, it's, they're killing me. No, they're not. You don't know what it's like. Nothing can prepare you for what you run into on Key Wade. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to put in words. Just, um, you know, it's, it's difficult enough doing some of this work, but then being covered in, in bugs and mosquitoes and noceums on top of that is, um, is, is really a, a challenge. I think from working out there for 30 plus years, Dave has in many ways become immune to those mosquito bites. I, I like to think that he's kind of developed like rhino skin. He just, uh, either that or they just don't really care to bite him as much anymore. Beautiful as it looks, um, it can be really uh, rough at nighttime depending on the current wind situation. So, uh, you know, there's no CMs and mosquitoes that really can test your patience um, and mental ability to get the job done. So the mosquito suits uh, and all layers of clothing, no matter what, uh, were sort of the things we had to do to keep our heads straight and uh, get through the night. We're talking at nights in the summer. You're out there working. You're digging trenches to cage these nests, to protect them from the predators. And it's a really hard project and it requires a lot of dedication. So my hat goes off to everybody who's worked on that project because it is not easy, but it is so worth it. When you see a hatchling come out of a nest, it is just the most fabulous thing. And you know that you have protected that nest and you protected that baby and that baby's gonna make it to the Gulf. And that's just a wonderful thing to be able to feel. You know, they're, they're one of the definitions of charismatic megafauna. Uh, you look at these animals and um, you just kind of go, wow. Dave's uh, just demeanor and personality and dedication to the whole Kiwaden Sea Turtle Project in general um, was just really, really inspiring. I mean, he's been doing it for years and years and years and he never gets tired of it, never gets sick of it. Um, and just that passion and drive to continue on year after year uh, was something you could just tell within a matter of days or minutes of speaking with him, um, knowing that he, you know, put his life's work into this project. You hear a lot of things working with Dave, and a, a lot of people know Dave, so many people do. He's, he's really touched on a lot of different people's lives, um, especially in the sea turtle community. Uh, but there was one reporter in particular that has had a, a longer rapport with him as well and, and called him a, uh, a Southwest Florida treasure. And I, I think that couldn't be more spot on, really. <laughs> and I could go on and on about Dave, but I just want to say one more thing. And that's in 2017. We rebuilt the uh, field station where the interns and all of the biologists stay at night to get out of the thunderstorms when they roll in uh, and you need to get in there. And it's where we keep all our equipment. It's out on Key Waden Island. 
and the old one had fallen into, let's just say it was toast. And so we built a new one and we dedicated it to Dave Addison. It's now called the David S. Addison Sea Turtle Research Station. And it could not have been dedicated to a more deserving person. He's dedicated his career to protecting these animals. And I just can't say enough about it. The other thing I think that may not be as obvious to people, it, it dawned on me after I'd been doing this for a few years, if you're on the beach and you see one of these animals come up out of the water, lumber up the beach, uh, go through the behaviors that it does to, to dig the, the nest. They use their hind feet. They never see the eggs. They just drop the eggs and when uh, the time is right, they cover the nest up, disguise it, and then crawl back in the water. But I can remember just standing there many times looking at these things, thinking to myself, well, if I wanted to, I can turn back the clock to any time in human history or even prehistory, and this is what's been going on. They're a link to the past. And when you watch this going on, and here's this animal doing what she does, and has been doing it for over 100 million years, uh, for a brief period of time and all the hubbub of life in the 21st century, everything is the way it's supposed to be.